you are again welcome in my video today we are going to learn about a modern periodic law in the last period we studied about the mendeleev's periodic table we saw how mendeleev he arranged all the known elements into a periodic table actually the, uh, he laid a foundation for a modern periodic table so today we are going to see what is the modern periodic table so actually the scientific world didn't know anything about the interior of the atom when uh, mendeleev put for the uh, mendeleev's periodic table so after the discovery of electron the scientists they started exploring the relationship between the electron number of an atom and the atomic number so the atomic number uh, in the mendeleev's periodic table only indicated the serial number of the element nothing else but uh, in the year 1913 uh, sir henry mosley he demonstrated that with the help of experiments which he carried out um, with the help of uh, x-ray tube and he uh, denoted that the atomic number of an element it corresponds to the uh, positive charge of the um, 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 nucleus which is present in the nucleus which is nothing but the number of protons that it means there was a resemblance between the number of protons in the nucleus and the electrons revolving around the nucleus and remember this revealed that the atomic number is more fundamental property of an element than its atomic mass and accordingly the statement of the modern periodic law it was stated earlier on you know that the mendeleev he stated the uh, mendeleev's periodic law that was the properties of elements are periodic function of their atomic masses but it was got revised by sir henry mosley and he told that the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers so this was the modern periodic law so students uh, now we are going to see about the modern periodic table it is nothing but the long form of the periodic table so the classification of elements resulting from arrangement of elements in an increasing order of their atomic number is the modern periodic table so the properties of elements they can be predicted more accurately with the help of a modern periodic table form uh, on the basis of the atomic numbers of the element and the modern periodic table is also called as the long form of a periodic table so in the modern periodic table the elements are arranged arranged um, accordance in accordance with the atomic number and as a result most of the drawbacks of the mendeleev's periodic table they were appeared to be removed there so um, however you know that in the mendeleev's periodic table there was the ambiguity in the giving the position to the hydrogen it also uh, is uh, is uh, retained or not removed in the uh, modern periodic table so you have seen that in the previous standard in the class 9 that the electronic configuration of atom and the way which in which the electrons are distributed in the shells around the nucleus and it is determined with the help of the total number of electrons in the atom and uh, you know that it is nothing but uh, the atomic number of that atom so the relationship between the atomic number of an atom and its electronic configuration is clearly seen in the modern periodic table so students now we are going to see the structure of a modern periodic table so this is the periodic table in front of you uh, the modern periodic table it contains seven horizontal rows which are called as periods which are numbered one to seven similarly there are 18 vertical columns in this table and that are called as groups they are numbered from 1 to 18 and remember the arrangement of the periods and the groups they result into the formation of some boxes and the atomic numbers they are serially indicated in the upper part of the boxes so you can see at the upper part of the box uh, the atomic number is given there and remember each box in this periodic table it is it corresponds to the uh, place for one element only apart from this the seven rows two rows are shown separately below the periodic table you can see that there are two rows 
those two rows are called as the lanthanide series and the actinide series respectively so uh, in this periodic table there are total 118 boxes and it means that there are 118 places for the elements in the modern periodic table so the you can see here some block is given there um, to um, extreme right hand side left hand side to the middle and the lower part of the uh, periodic table so remember this periodic table it is entire periodic table is divided into the four blocks so that blocks are called as s block p block d block and f block now what are those s block p block d block and f block remember according to the electronic configurations of the elements uh, they are categorized into the different blocks so if you observe group number one and group number two they are the s block elements then group number 13 to 18 they constitute the p block group number 3 to 12 they form the d block and the series which are placed below the um, um, modern periodic table which are called as lanthanide series and actinide series they are nothing but the f block remember the d block elements they are the um, they are also called as the transition elements you can see here a zigzag lining uh, which uh, divides the periodic table into the left and right part uh, remember that line is present in the p block of a um, uh, periodic table so the zigzag line line it separates the elements metals and non metals and remember the uh, elements which show the um, properties of metals as well as non metals they are included in the third type of element which is called as metalloids the metalloids are near to the zigzag line and uh, to the extreme left, left hand side of a modern periodic table the metals are there and to the right side of a uh, zigzag line the non metals are kept there so all the metals they are at the left side of a modern periodic table and the non metals are at the right side of a modern periodic table so students we are going to study now a modern periodic table and the electronic configuration of elements remember within a period the neighboring elements they differ slightly in the properties and the distant element that it means the elements which are far, far away from that element they will differ widely or differ uh, most in the properties so elements in the same group they show the similarity and gradation in their properties those characteristics of groups and the periods in the modern periodic table they are because of the electronic configuration of elements so it is the electronic configuration of any uh, any element uh, which decides the uh, the group and the period in which it is to be placed that it means the characteristics of groups and periods in the modern periodic table they are uh, understood by the comparison of the properties of elements so now we are going to study the groups and the electronic configuration you will find that the number of valence electrons in all the uh, elements from the group one that is the family of alkali metals it is the same similarly if you look at the elements from any other group you will find that the number of their valence shell electrons to be the same for example the element the beryllium and the magnesium and the calcium they belongs to group number two you can see here in the group number two there are beryllium then the magnesium and the calcium so this is the family of alkaline earth metals and there are two electrons in their outermost shell that it means the each um, if we see the electronic configuration of beryllium the, uh, it contains the electronic configuration 2 2 that means two electrons in the outermost shell uh, in the case of magnesium its atomic number is 12 that means electronic configuration is 2 8 2 again two electrons in the outermost shell and uh, in the case of calcium it possesses the atomic number is equal to 20 so the electronic configuration will be 2 8 8 2 again two electrons in the outermost shell so there are two electrons in the outermost shells of those 
elements in the group number 2. Similarly, there are 7 electrons in the outermost shell of the elements such as the fluorine, chlorine from the group number 17. So, the family of halogens, they possesses the 7 electrons in their outermost shell. So, um, this indicates that while going from top to the bottom within any group, one electronic shell, it gets added at a time. And from this, we can say that the electronic configuration of outermost shell it is the characteristic of a particular group. However, as we go down a group, the number of shells they goes on increasing. So now we are going to study the periods and the electronic configuration. Uh, here in this periodic table, you can see, uh, can you observe the group number, uh, sorry, the period number two? The, what are the elements present in that? They are the lithium, then the barium, the, then the boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So if we see the electronic configuration of them, remember the electronic configuration of lithium is 2, 1, then that is of beryllium, 2, 2, boron, 2, 3, carbon, 2, 4, nitrogen, 2, 5, oxygen, 2, 6, fluorine, 2, 7, and neon, 2, 8. So you will find that the number of valence electron is difference, uh, different in those elements. But remember, uh, the number of shell is same. That means in this period, all the elements, they do possess only two shells in their electronic configuration, say the shell K and L only. But the number of valence shell electrons, they get differ. While we go from left to right in a period, each time, one electron is added in the valence shell. So, uh, this is the periodic trend in the periodic table. We can see that <coughs> the elements uh, with the same number of shells which is occupied belong to the same period. That it means uh, in the period number 2, the elements namely lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, they have the um, electrons in uh, that means distributed in two shells only. That is the K and L. And elements in the third period, which are namely as uh, sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and aragon, they are having the electronic configuration in which the electrons are distributed in the three shells, say the K, L, and M shell. If we write down the electronic configuration, you will observe that while going from left to right again um, in the period, each time a new electron is added in an electronic configuration of a next element and the valence shell shows addition of one electron in that. So the number of elements in the first period is determined by the um, electron capacity of the shell and the, uh, the law of electron octet. So as per the electron holding capacity of the shell uh, 2, elements are present in the first period and 8 elements in the second period. So the third period also contains only 8 elements due to the law of electronic octet. And there are few more factors which control the filling of electrons in the subsequent periods which will be considered in the next standard that means in the 11th and 12th. So the chemical reactivity of an element is determined by the number of valence electrons uh, present in it and the shell number of the valence shell. So the information on this point is observed from the position of elements in the periodic table. So the modern periodic table has proved useful for the study of elements.